Thank you, Luigi. And again, welcome to everyone for joining us on, the, on this webinar of the Hair Continuum Learning Collaborative Year 3 activities. Um, we hope that you'll find it useful and um, um, give you an opportunity to learn. If you don't remember what we did in the first couple years of the collaborative, but we'll review that and then we'll uh, tell, you, tell you about how we're going to approach year three. So could I have the next slide, please? Okay. So this is the agenda. Um, we'll begin by talking about the purpose and some of the reasons behind the Technical Assistance Cooperative Agreement. We'll review what we did in 2016 and 17. And then we'll talk about what we intend to do in 2017 and 18 with respect to the topics and approach we'll take, the timeline for the 2017-18 uh, collaboratives, and then we'll have time for some questions and answers. Next slide, please. So before we, bring, we begin the year three presentation, um, I'd like to provide just a few thoughts about how we approached putting this collaborative together, together and some of, some of our thinking behind it. This, this project recognizes and supports the unique role of Part A jurisdictions in providing high quality accessible HIV care in metropolitan areas. Uh, when we envisioned this project, we developed this based upon what we viewed as the changing clinical and healthcare environment that our Part A programs are currently operating in. Uh, as you know, an estimated 70, 72 percent of all persons living with HIV infections re reside in one of our Part A um, metropolitan areas. In our jurisdictions, we are serving an increasing diverse population that are impacted with an ever-changing HIV epidemic. In addition, as you are fully aware, the clinical paradigm has changed significantly such that ongoing and effective treatment can not only enhance the quality and life of, uh, length of life, but can suppress the virus and reduce further infections. So therefore, we view our Part A program as having a significant public impact on HIV incidents moving forward. We felt that this project could support Part A's jurisdiction's unique responsibility of maintaining and improving system of HIV care within the changing healthcare environment that we're all situated in. Um, we know that we have a program that's data-driven, community-based, based on community uh, needs assessments. It's responsive to the, the variety of medical and clinical issues that um, uh, we are faced with the new HIV, HIV epidemic. And we're working with a set of experienced providers to weave, weave together a system that serves diverse populations and continues to improve efforts to positively impact the continuum of HIV care. So these are some of our thoughts behind the development of this collaborative, and this is why we also think that it can make a valuable uh, contribution to the overall success of the Ryan White program. So with that overview, I will turn it over to Monique Richards, who, who is our staff person overseeing the cooperative. Monique? Thank you, Gary. Next slide. So the purpose of the Care Continuing Learning Collaborative, known as the CCLC, is threefold. It's to affect positive outcomes along the HIV care continuum by providing technical assisting using a collaborative learning approach and rapid improvement principles and practices. Secondly, to apply data-driven evidence-based strategies for improving population health care outcomes. And lastly, to scale up interventions to improve HIV outcomes by stimulating action across jurisdictions and among many partners. Next slide. Why a learning collaborative? Well, not only to leverage resources, the division leadership wants to foster an environment where recipients can learn from each other as well as our national experts, also um, facilitate uh, the use of technology to sustain cyber teams as well as self-selected individuals, also to ensure innovative 
um, communication that is transparent, that will foster openness to contributions from all participants. Now with that said, I'm going to pass it over to Michael Costa, who is the project director for the CCLC. Thanks, Monique. I appreciate that. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Before we get started in that, let's get a couple of our terms defined so that there's no confusion as I present on the information. Uh, first of all, Part A recipient, exactly who you think it is. It is all of you. It is the direct recipient of record. Part A jurisdiction, we use that as the geographical area served by the Part A recipient. And that includes you know, the networks of providers and other partners with whom they work. Now, uh, Learning Collaborative, when we use that term, it is a set of Part A recipient jurisdiction representatives. Uh, and that's a, a team of people, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So it's a group of Part A's coming together uh, to work together on a specific topic and goal. A Learning Collaborative team, and I'll give some examples of what this means in a few slides, uh, that is the group that the Part A recipient decided was necessary uh, to represent their jurisdiction in trying to achieve the goals of the Learning Collaborative. So it might mean bringing in someone from surveillance, some of your policy folks, perhaps someone from the Planning Council. So um, each Part A is not just one individual as they come into the uh, Learning Collaborative, but they are in fact a, um, a group coming from the Part A. A Learning Collaborative Liaison, that's going to be one of our team members, and I'll talk about who our team is in a moment, uh, and their job is to facilitate and convene the Learning Collaborative calls and learning sessions, as well as any of the other group and support activities that we have going on as part of the Learning Collaborative. Faculty, these are individuals that we will bring in with specialized knowledge and expertise who will deliver uh, learning modules or practice modules that will be part of the Learning Collaborative over the course of the meetings. And a learning session, well, that, that's basically um, any time we meet together as the regular monthly group uh, to go over what sites are working on and to get um, information provided and expertise. conveyed by faculty members. So just wanted to go over a couple of those terms so that people weren't getting all tangled up in the terms as we talked. So here's who is involved in the CARE Continuum Learning Collaborative, both the leadership and the TA team. Clearly, the leadership is the HIV AIDS Bureau. But they're also part of the training and TA team. Um, as we did last year, we will often reach out to uh, the experts at the HIV AIDS Bureau to provide us key information or even come in uh, to provide some learning on sessions. The app team uh, comprises APT Associates, which I'm a member of, I'm a, an employee of APT Associates, but we also have our colleagues from NASDAQ, as well as our colleagues from Mission Analytics Group, and these are part of the learning collaborative team that actually um, are involved in facilitating uh, the ongoing meetings and learning. We have expert consultants that we reach out to, one is a standing committee, which is the National Expert Stakeholder Committee, and we'll review who those folks are in just a minute. And they're available, in addition to providing key expertise, providing us overall review where we may be looking at topics or areas of focus and ask them to review as well as another set of um, uh, eyes with a great deal of experience and expertise to make sure we're not missing anything and um, to provide any additional information they can to enrich what we're trying to accomplish. And then other external experts, these are people that we would reach out to to provide key learning. If we're looking for a particular module in a learning collaborative to address a particular area by reaching out to um, our colleagues at HAB, at NASDAQ, at Mission, and the NEST, we can help identify who these individuals are. So again, I mentioned the NESC just a moment ago, and I'm not going to go through and read all of the names, but you can see there that we wanted to draw upon a wide range of experience and expertise 
around the areas relevant to HIV AIDS in Part A's, everything from social justice and ethics to um, policy and advocacy, uh, surveillance um, and monitoring, uh, strategy development. And of course, clinical research and treatment and uh, looking toward particular stakeholder uh, advocacy, advocacy groups and individuals who have some in-depth experience around the working of planning councils. Again, they, they stand not just as individual experts, but also as a standing advisory group to review and help enrich what we're trying to accomplish. So let's talk about what we did um, in the last round in 2016-17 as part of those um, learning collaborative groups. First of all, we had 25 Part A recipients who participated from all over the country, uh, which was a, a, a terrific um, experience and brought a, a wide uh, array of uh, expertise as well as ideas for how to address the continuum across jurisdictions. What we did the first time around was a kind of a one-off approach. We, uh, if you all may remember, we put an all call out to Part A's and said, what is your primary concern looking at uh, in, uh, reinforcing better outcomes along the HIV AIDS care continuum in your jurisdiction. So it was very much of a, a, a needs assessment. And from there, we grouped them together into like topics. And where there were critical mass around like topics, we created domains of interest to um, form these groups around. And you can see the five domains here that got groups together they were data access and coordination, um, and then once you had data, actually using that data to inform the need for and select approaches, uh, identifying and implementing those approaches. Uh, there was one particularly focused on linkage to care because we had very critical mass around individuals really seeking to look into that area. And then last but not least, the changing healthcare landscape, which we've all been very much involved in uh, over the past year. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the um, successes that went on and what some of the groups accomplished. Again, there were 25 groups, so we're not going to go through them all. But I just want to give you a flavor of the range of what different Part A jurisdictions worked on. Um, there was uh, developing and implementing peer-to-peer -peer retention programs, uh, data-to-care programs. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment because there was a lot of energy around that. Uh, figuring out how to engage uh, non-legacy or non-historic Ryan White providers into HIV AIDS care and making them sort of more aware of the broader sets of networks of which they may not be aware because they've not traditionally been tied in to Ryan White. It's another one we'll talk about. Uh, one of our sites launched a new Part A data system. Uh, another was uh, um, enhancing their retention in care uh, program. Uh, there was a quality management program that was redesigned and revised to include focusing on youth-specific interventions. And last but not least, um, being able to track and pilot a barriers to care tracking tool. Again, these were sort of very, um, you can see there's a, a wide breadth there. And one of the reasons is because of the way we did it last year in that, as I mentioned, sort of a one-off model as opposed to how we're doing it this year. So this year uh, approach will be a little bit different in that we will be more of a classic learning collaborative. Last year, as I said, we sort of reached out to the community of Part A, said, what are you interested in doing, grouped them together by like topics. But even within those topics, which were similar areas that people wanted to work in, there were disparate goals. And it may be that in my increasing access to data, I might be looking at merging um, records with or getting better access to the state surveillance data. Uh, another site might be looking at merging records and getting better access from the network of providers and marrying that into their careware system. So it was really a range of topics. Um, we did that once, and that was sort of a hybrid of a community of practice and a learning collaborative approach in which everyone wasn't, one wasn't working on the same thing, but they were working on similar enough things that they would think there was significant cross-pollination in that work. This year's topics um, are going to be, uh, have already been identified in advance, and so there will be more standardized curricula, goals, and measures. 
and there'll be a shorter time frame, just given the length of the, of the um, cooperative agreement. From the time that we launch to finish will be nine months. However, the availability and use of that virtual approach that Monique uh, talked about at the beginning of the presentation will remain. And uh, these are the topics that we're looking at now. The way these topics were derived is we reached out to our current learning collaborators and said, what do you think um, would be areas of interest to continue working in and that you know from your peers in other Part A's are likely to be of interest? We posed much the same question uh, to HAB and drew upon their expertise, as well as the NESC, as well as some of our other um, key experts. And what we came up with was Part A uh, uh, data to care, but this is Part A driven data to care because we know that many of, uh, if not most, of the data to care initiatives are initiated in many ways at the state level. And there were Part A saying that we didn't have it at all or in the way that was serving our needs as well as it could. So they want to begin to initiate and direct it from a Part A perspective. So that's one topic. The other is integrating networks uh, to, to support um, better HIV care treatment from non-Ryan White providers. We, we talked about that a moment ago. We had a few sites that were working on this last time. Again, with um, healthcare coverage expansion, in many ways there are providers who are providing care to clients who may previously have been getting that care from Ryan White providers. And these new providers, there is some concern and some anecdotal evidence that perhaps they are not as aware of the entire network of the continuum of services that are available to HIV AIDS clients and that bringing them into the fold, so to speak, um, will help uh, raise their game and give them more resources and tools. Uh, this was one of the terrific ones because we had a number of sites that were a little bit further ahead of others and they, we actually pulled together peer-to-peer -to -peer groups where they could talk about, well, how did you even set up your business plan for this? And how did you even develop the UAs? And what, what do your curricula look like? And, and uh, so, as I said, some, some energy around that one as well. Then retention and care. Uh, this time we're going to um, focus on a particularly, uh, like, one, maybe two uh, models um, of, of, of an intervention. And that will be focusing probably on youth, um, young MSM, transgender and perhaps IPV. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to make that decision in just a moment um, as part of the ask to you all. And then another one was pay for performance models. Sites wanted to know that you know there are pay for performance models out there in the CMS world and in other uh, kinds of um, healthcare coverage models. And sites were wondering, well, how would we go about doing that if we wanted to incentivize quality improvement amongst our subrecipients who are providing care? So I talked a little bit earlier, I just want to review back. When you come to a learning collaborative and you're bringing a team, what might that team be? Uh, depending upon your focus and what you want to accomplish and which learning collaborative you're in, it may be you know, your, your CQM staff, uh, it could be planning council members, it could be someone from just the Part B staff in general or the surveillance staff, maybe some of your provider networks. Um, perhaps even you know members of your integrated HIV prevention and care planning um, bodies. Again, it will depend on which learning collaborative you're going into and what you want to accomplish and the particulars of your jurisdiction. You will know best who those team members should be. That's nothing we'd, we could ever you know tell you it should be. Um, and again, the teams will look different across the different learning teams and even across different jurisdictions. So the Learning Collaborative Platform, for those of you who didn't participate last time, we have a fun, kitschy name we like, which is the Accelerating Change Through Interactive Online Networks, or the Action Portal. And all of our meetings are held with um, bi-directional screen and video image sharing uh, and um, open work boards that everyone can work off of so that we can be sharing different materials and different visual and text images with each other while we're speaking. And we do insist upon sites doing video conferences. You know, it just not in this program, and certainly not anybody who's on this webinar now. But I have heard that in other webinars, people have been known to check their email, or look at documents and edit them, or even play Candy Crush. 
Um, but I'm sure that would never happen with this group. But <laughs> or Angry Birds. Um, but uh, we find that when people have their screens up, and you can actually see someone's face, and there's something to watch visually in, in communication, it, people are just more engaged in the discussion. And I, at least I know I am. So the functionality um, allows people to interact and discuss and share and collaborate, uh, and collaborate by posting and sharing information, as I mentioned, Amolo, just in real time. Or it can be asynchronous. People can post things up. And we do have the benefit of when someone posts something up in there for a learning collaborative, which, of which others are part. Everyone who's part of that learning collaborative gets a notice about what was just posted and what it was and a link to go look at it. Um, and so it can function as an online document repository that's being shared out real time. Uh, we can use it for expert moderated discussion boards and peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, mentoring. And if people want virtual site visit support, because they can actually reach each other and do video face-to-face -face with one another through this board. Uh, there is the ability to request TA uh, through it as well. But the last time around, and I expect it will be this time soon, we have so much communication that easily 95% of the requests for TA came either during a meeting call um, in our monthly meetings or a, uh, an email that followed shortly thereafter, just following up on a point. These are just a couple of images of a few things. One, you can see what the Action Portal entry screen looks like. It is um, got standard imaging and colors and graphics so that you always know that, yes, you really are in the Action Portal. And uh, then there are tabs that allow you to link to different functionality. And this is an image of one of our meetings. Uh, no, your connection is not bad. I blurred the faces on purpose because I did not go out and ask everyone to sign an image release ahead of time. And uh, we are deeply paranoid, as we should be, about sharing personal information. It's not our place to do so. So in a meeting, this is what it might look like. You've got people talking to each other. And there's a whiteboard up that's showing what you're talking about. Uh, we find that's much more useful than just a disembodied voice on the phone. So the app team which comprises uh, the, which is composed of the group that I, I mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, our job is to develop the learning sessions um, and to develop the modules for, for training, which this time, again, will be uh, much more standardized, um, to convene and facilitate those monthly um, meetings, help identify the experts to deliver the learning session content. Again, we say help identify because if somebody has an idea, of, oh, you know, I went to a meeting on such and such, and we, I'd really love to hear their perspective for the group, we can invite them in and bring them in. We also provide group and one-on-one -on -one TA. And that group and one-on-one -on -one TA, it can really be anything that's going to facilitate and accelerate doing the work that only you can do. If there's anything we can take off your hands to do the work for you, a literature review, what have you, um, going and finding um, some expertise that can um, come to your site to provide you some advice, we take that on. Uh, and last, of course, we host the action portal and make sure that the uh, resources are being disseminated as they should be. So what's the commitment to commit? We try to keep this a, uh, a low barrier commitment. Um, you know, we do ask that you attend the monthly cyber team meetings um, so that you are there to both share as well as gain information uh, because the, the teaching is not didactic. Um, from one perspective, we want to hear what other sites think about this and how it may or may not uh, comport with th their approach or what they can do on their, their jurisdiction around that given topic. You do need to first, in the beginning, create an action plan. Um, we, do, we are pretty insistent about that because we really want to know that you've thought through, what is it I'm going to do? What are the steps? What are the resources? Who's involved? What's the timeline? And then it's sort of a test of feasibility. Um, do I need to take a smaller bite of the elephant to get to where I'm going, in this case, within a nine-month time frame? And so we want to work and make sure that that's pretty tight. Um, we do ask that you actively engage and share expertise so that you're both gathering as well as sharing um, information with peers. Um, we do ask, to the extent that you're able to do, that you can share any materials for use by other participating part A's. During the last go around, we had a lot of Part A's who provided everything from DUAs to business plans to curricula. Um, and that was all very useful uh, for other sites to be able to lift and adapt. And then there is an evaluation, always. 
Uh, there'll be a midline and evaluation data collection, low burden design, just a survey, maybe a call for an interview with the evaluator, uh, not too heavy a lift, but we want to know um, how things are working and why, so HAP can use that information for future initiatives. So here's the timeline coming forward. Um, by mid-October, you will receive an invitation to log on, and the log on will take you to that an image that looks very much like that action portal site you just saw a moment ago, and select one of the new learning collaborative topics. In there, there will also be an ask that once you select it, a little comment box will come up to ask you, you know, what does this mean to you? When you're thinking of this, what are you talking about? And that will help us uh, align what we're going to train on a little bit better, and if we wind up with a lot of people all um, signing up for one particular topic, then if we see that pe some group of people are more focused on doing one particular aspect of it and another are focused on doing a different aspect, we can group uh, people that are uh, together so they're a little more aligned with one another. That, so that by mid-November, we can uh, kick off the learning collaboratives. We will launch it. We'll start the regular interactive meetings using the um, action Portal and Online Resources, uh, the learning and collaborative-based organizing, uh, organized training and TA will start, sessions will start right away. And again, as will the technical assistance outreach. So if there's things that you need, something that we can do to help support it, we can be there to do that. Um, also, we will determine as a group and with our evaluator, and everyone will agree with this, and by everyone I mean those participating in the learning collaboratives, that the measures for um, the milestones within the learning collaborative as a group are correct, comport with what's trying to be done, and are reasonable. So that is where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. And now we'd like to open it up for any questions or comments or suggestions uh, that you